So if you've seen my video with the homemade rotor for the Terex, you also know that I have a plan of building it over for a rotor tilt um, by cutting off the tilting part on top of my grading bucket with hydraulic tilt and weld that on top of the rotor and then attach these hydraulic rams and use these for making the tilt. So I ordered this last year already for the plan was building it this winter but I didn't get the time. So I have the brackets for welding on the rotor and the brackets for welding on the ramps and everything. And I did some measuring with the uh, cardboard plate and found out that this was the perfect length. So that's why I ordered it. Uh, the hydraulic ramps that are on the tilt bucket today are too short. So I needed something longer and these ones will give me around 40 degrees of tilt each way. So that was the plan in the beginning. And then this one came up for sale on Facebook. Not cheap, but reasonably priced. And there's a reason for it. Uh, it is broken. So the tilt cylinder have torn apart the housing for the gear for the rotor. So if you see at this, it's cast iron. So yeah. So when this one came out for sale, I thought I could buy it and use it for parts. Maybe use this tilt cylinder and the connections and stuff like that. And this one also has um, a swivel inside. So it have outlets for hydraulic under. And that would be really great for me because using the grab under the rotor, when I'm building the retaining walls with natural stone and stuff like that, I can rotate the grab as many times as I want. So that would be perfect. So plan A was just buying this one for the parts. When I ordered or bought this and it started to ship, I was looking into welding cast iron and it looked like it's a manageable job. Uh, it's not that difficult, I think. Uh, watching YouTube, everything looks easy, so who knows? But I will first try and weld this together with cast iron. So because my welder broke, I have now ordered a new welding machine and some rods for welding cast iron. And yeah, maybe it will be a great success and uh, maybe not. But I think this will take some time. So I think I will make these videos in episodes. So maybe at episode four, it will be making the homemade rotator roto tilt anyways, because this didn't work out, but who knows, we'll see. Uh, I think we will just uh, disassemble everything here and start cleaning it and making it ready for welding. And then we'll try welding it and see if that works. And yeah, maybe we'll have this one for the Terex and maybe we won't, <laughs> we will see. But I think it's a lot of good parts on it. So e either way, I think uh, it will be a fun project to try and make this one over for work again. Uh, it also has a hydraulic uh, locking for the bucket. So all that electronic is in here. So hopefully I can use some of it because this one is meant for the swab system. So you have the electronic controlling everything on the rotor tilt. And I don't have that system on my machine. So I need to build this over for a four hose system because that's what I have today. And for doing that, uh, I may, be, I may be able to use some of the electronics down here and just control it with switches. So I have a switch inside for switching from tilt to the outlet under here. And maybe I can have another switch for switching for the, the bucket locking. And yeah, we will see. Uh, it will be fun to see if we, what we can use. And if I can't weld this one, I will continue building the homemade rotator or the homemade roto tilt. So. Uh, and haven't you seen the video with the homemade rotor? Just check it out and see. It's uh, a lot smaller than this one. So that's another thing. I think if I buy build the other one, it will be lighter than this one is. This one is around 120 kilos. But this size rotor tilt is meant for a 2 ton to 4 ton machine. So it will work on my machine, but maybe not with full buckets. Who knows? We'll see. Um, yeah, I think we just uh, start with disassemble everything and uh, take a look at what we have. I 
never owned a roto tilt before. I barely used a roto tilt, just a little bit for testing and for fun. So I was not aware of this one having. Uh, you can see the, here, this is a manifold for grease. So you just put your uh, grease gun on here and all these holsters distribute to every other places that it needs grease. So that's pretty great. You can see here is coming for the gear. It's a host on here and a host on here. And here is for the tilt right here. So yeah, pretty great. <laughs> I was not aware of it having that. So that's pretty fun. So what I'm working on now, I removed the hydraulic and everything that is connected to this tilting part and now I will remove this and then I will be able to take this uh, connecting grind or the tilting part off this and then we can open up and have a look at the electronics. Okay, I think uh, we need something stronger. I understand that the Ryubi won't take this. What I've been doing now is uh, removing these lines where the grease come through from the manifold and it's really easy, it's the same one as you use in air. You just push in this little ring and then you can pull it out. And when you're going in, you just push it in and it locks, it self locks. And for out, it's just pushing in and pulling out. Easy as that. The one bolt in here did not want to come loose, but these keys with the ball in the end, they are not that good as the one that have the straight edges. So a last resort now, or a last chance, I'm trying to use the one with the straight edges. And maybe this will hold enough to get the bolt to come loose. If not, I think I need to drill it. The bolt 
this. Or <laughs> not this one was probably came with some IKEA fun furniture or something. bolts everywhere let's see okay so I was actually hoping I didn't need to take any anything of this apart that was why I tried to take off the bolts uh, here first because then we could get it loose but you can see it's hanging on something so I don't know what it is so probably it is uh, the hoses that is going through this weevil and everything down here. So maybe it won't help to take this off. Um, maybe it won't help to take this off. Maybe it's I need to turn it around and take the quick connection off and everything under there. And then I can pull everything up. That's probably a good possibility. So with the bottom plate open, we can see the swivel ending here, and uh, I think we need to disassemble everything here. But this was a little smart thing. Uh, the screw I loosened first, it was uh, here, and uh, you can see this plastic tubing here is running through there. And this means when you are opening, so your bucket is not attached properly, this will come out. And you can see this from in the cab because this is the um, the thing that is pointing to your cab when you're grabbing the bucket with the hooks here. So then you will see that it's not open and then when you are pushing it back you will see that this goes in and it's closed. So neat little easy system actually. So if we manage to get this one uh, running again we will definitely use this. see a little bit more. I wonder if I loosen these two and the bottom part of the swivel is coming out and then I can take the top part off on the top of the rotor tilt. Maybe. Needless to say I have no idea what I'm doing so I hope this is the right thing. is loose as planned. Yep, that was actually just right. <laughs> Funny. Okay, I went and got some tubs, so I have something to put it in. It's probably some oil and stuff in it, so yeah. Let's just see what we got. There it is. So this is the swivel. Uh, this was the connection of the two bolts we had. Here are probably some of the outlets, and we can see down here. If the GoPro wants to, eh, doesn't want to. And there is the bottom, and this is the middle then. And here are the bolts that are keeping the rotor together. So what we need to do now is just clean out so we can get down here and just loosen all these bolts and then we can pull everything apart.
it's not much left now for pulling apart. Uh, so this is one unit, the quick connector under is one unit. I can take out the swivel. I will do that and put it on there again, um, over there. So it don't get all the dirt and stuff like that. I just need to disconnect these outlets under. Uh, yeah, we can also see the rotor has some keyways. So there are two here and uh, two the missing there. So I'll put them in its own bag. And this should now just pull right out the, the drive, the worm drive. So, or if not, I will just take this apart and yeah, then it's, everything is apart. It's just start to clean it and everything and make it ready for welding. So, but that will be in a other YouTube video. So. off I have degreased it removed all the old grease and coated everything in a thin layer of tin oil so nothing will corrode while we are waiting and we are waiting for the welding rods for this I have ordered some welding rods for cast iron so when that arrives we will start welding on this and you can see it's pretty thick so I need to grind a little bit to get the v-shape there so I have can fill it up with welding and stuff like that and I probably need to preheat it, I probably need to cool it really slowly and I need to hit it or knocking on it with a hammer after I weld and I can only weld one centimeter at a time. Yeah, I've been watching YouTube how to weld cast iron. So yeah, how hard can it be? That's everything for this part. So the next part will be welding and grinding. So remember to subscribe so you won't miss it. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I think this will be a lot of fun.